The following program has been rated GE by the Kenya Film Classification Board. It is therefore suitable for general family viewing. Hello everyone, welcome to Chungusha Jami. My name is Betty Akuku, I am your host today and I am joined by a lovely lady who is joining us to talk about social anxiety and androphobia. I guess you are wondering what that is. If you know it, good for you. But we are here to talk about that and she's going to be sharing with us her story. I hope that you like it. Welcome, kindly introduce yourself. My name is Jacinta Amboi. I'm 24 years and I've been living with social anxiety disorder and anthrophobia, mm -hmm. which means that I have this phobia, uh, fear of men mm -hmm. since childhood. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, fear of men uh, and uh, social anxiety. Uh, you probably need to tell us what that is so that we are able to work with you step by step, understanding clearly. Are you able to tell us what social anxiety is? Okay, social anxiety is extreme fear mm -hmm. of being judged, being embarrassed, being humiliated, being evaluated negatively by people. You are always feeling excessive fear, intense fear, extreme fear mm -hmm. while doing every single daily activity. And it gets to the point where you start avoiding social situations. Mm -hmm. And when you're in those social situations, you get these physical symptoms of anxiety, mm -hmm. like shaking, trembling, uh, rapid heartbeat, mm -hmm. you feel nausea, stomach issues, mm -hmm. dizziness, confusion, work disturbance, many physical symptoms of anxiety. And those social situations that make you experience those anxiety mm -hmm. include simple things like meeting new people, uh, talking with unfamiliar people, eating in public, going to a restaurant to order something and having to eat in front of people, mm -hmm. going to a store to order something. You do it with a lot of fear. Mm -hmm. dating, you, dating is also an issue, making friends, mm -hmm. uh, attending parties, social gatherings. When it comes like to school, you find if it's in school, this kid can't speak in class, can't answer questions in class. You're always quiet, interacting with your classmates. It's hard, teachers. Mm -hmm. Like if it's work, you have trouble interacting with coworkers, bosses. Mm -hmm. You tend to underperform. Also, it makes you to avoid jobs where you know you have to deal with people. Talking mm -hmm. on the phone, making phone calls, as in, it affects all aspects of your life. So does it so happen to, uh, to women or it happens to men as well? Social anxiety mm -hmm. happens to both genders. Okay. Yeah. Is it just about uh, the woman fearing the man or anything else could actually cause social anxiety? Uh, social anxiety, there is a difference okay. between social anxiety and androphobia. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so what exactly is your story? Because you are a victim mm. of this, of why are you talking to us about this today? Okay, I'm talking to you uh, because of this today, mm -hmm. because all these years growing up, I never knew that I had social anxiety. I used to ask myself, why am I always feeling this fearful while doing everything? Like, you are just feeling fearful doing everything. You see, now I'm here to create also awareness yeah. about social anxiety. Yes. Because in Kenya, people mm -hmm. are not aware. Wow. Yeah, people mm -hmm. are not aware about it. Comes out so exciting. Yeah, it but can come out and talk yeah. about it because you know when people look at you, mm. uh, not aggressive, not stepping forward to do something, it's very easy for them to judge you and pinpoint something. But uh, you'd easily just hide it and cover it, and you just assume that you are a quiet and mm. silent person. You know that person is outgoing, you know. I wonder how you were able to discover that it was actually a problem. Uh, I came to discover it mm -hmm. while in college. Mm -hmm. That's when I discovered it. Mm -hmm. I never knew I had it since childhood. Okay. Yeah. So you knew, you were able to find out that since childhood, this yeah. has been a problem. Yeah, what yeah. What happened? What's your story? Okay, growing up, mm -hmm. I was extremely shy. 
quiet and shares. I never used to interact with people. I was always withdrawn and so sure. Now I used to ask myself, why am I always feeling this fear for interacting with people doing everything? It continued that way through primary. When it came to high school, I went through the same hard trouble interacting with my, my classmates. Mm -hmm. When it came to class, I couldn't raise my hand to answer a question. Even when the teacher called on me, like, say, Jacinta, tell us the answer to this question. Immediately, even if I knew the answer, my my heart will start to beat rapidly or start to tremble, to shake. Like, yeah, and even my mind will go, will go blank. Now the teacher will assume that I don't know the answer, and I know it, but it's, it has just disappeared because of the anxiety. Mm -hmm. That continued, and many people used to say that there's internally no longer fear. It comes out as just, people just see you as fear, shy, quiet. Mm -hmm. But I used to feel that I can't be normal, especially in high school, I used to feel I can't be normal, but it was difficult for me to put my finger exactly on what it, what it is. Mm -hmm. I used to, every time we had pastors come into a school, I'd be in front to be prayed for. I thought that I had this spirit of fear mm -hmm. because I felt I can't be okay. It continued that way. Mm -hmm. I got out of high school with the same fear. Mm -hmm. I went to college with the same fear. I had uh, many troubles in college. Mm -hmm interacting with people, presenting in front of the class, making friends with us. What exactly like, had happened to you? Because, mm. you know, children are naturally playful mm. and naturally outgoing. Mm. They come to discover they have a problem when they are of age and they can speak for themselves and they can pick out something. But when a child is little and growing up, Usually because of their nature of just going out there and doing whatever. You know, a child is the one who would walk in here and take my glass of water or juice and just drink without asking me and they're fine. That's how children are. Uh, and they will do that so comfortably, you know. But a mother is able to pick out and say, this child is not normal because they like to keep to themselves. They don't like to socialize. They are not outgoing. Did you grow up with your parents? Yeah, I grew up with my parents. Uh -huh. Yeah. So they were not able to pick up if there was something that was unusual with you as a child. Uh, I can say they only thought I was just fearful. In shy. Yeah, yeah, in shy. Mm -hmm. They they never knew that it could be this condition. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they just assumed maybe as I grew up, mm -hmm. I like grow there, fearness, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they never knew exactly what it was. Okay. Yeah. So what exactly caused this to you? Okay. You have an idea? Mm -hmm. This social anxiety and mm -hmm. also the fear of men mm -hmm. was caused by what I went through in my childhood. Mm -hmm. I was raped mm -hmm. as a child, mm -hmm. even below the age of three years, mm -hmm. before even I could turn three years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think the trauma from that mm -hmm. affected me and it left me with these mm -hmm. issues. Yeah. You knew it was rape? At less than three years, it's too little. Uh, let me say, all these years growing up, I never knew that I had gone through such a thing. Uh -huh. the mem I think the event was traumatic mm -hmm. to a point where my memories got repressed. Mm -hmm. I never knew. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah, I never knew that I had gone through something like that. But I used to ask myself, okay, why do I fear men? I can't be that I fear men for no reason. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I later came to discover in college that actually mm -hmm. this is what caused it. How did trauma, you know childhood that that trauma? Rape? Because three years is a very little girl. Mm. And when such a thing happens to you, you probably want to talk about it. Mm. You know, when you know what it is, you can hide it from whoever your guardian or your parents or the people, the adults around you. Mm. But when you don't know, you want to talk about it freely like, Mom, so and so was here and he did this to me. Mm. Yeah. You kept it, you were just quiet about it. Did you know that it was rape, really? Uh, let me say, mm -hmm. I, I, I don't know exactly what happened when that happened to me because mm -hmm. I just recently came to remember, start remembering the memories. Mm -hmm. But I can't exactly tell what went on there. Mm -hmm. But I know I went through that sexual abuse and rape. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But I don't know how I was at that particular time exactly mm -hmm. in that year mm -hmm. when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. Yes. So did anyone discover? 
uh, discover discovered that you have been raped the yeah. people you were living with did they get to know that mm -hmm. Jacinta has been raped uh, for that mm -hmm. I've not yet asked them about the past. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've mm -hmm. not yet gone deeper into it, but mm -hmm. I know it actually happened. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So you don't know uh, the impact that it gave you then, but now after you left high school and went into college, you realize that something was amiss with you. Yeah. You were not acting normal. Mm -hmm. You feared, mm -hmm. you know social gatherings and people mm -hmm. and especially men mm -hmm. all right so um getting into that kind of a space where you are alone like you are always alone and mm -hmm. having to do things by yourself how has that been for you mm, it's not been easy mm -hmm. yeah because you find it difficult to do every single thing like talking to people, you do it with a lot of anxiety, mm -hmm. especially when you are meeting people you don't know. Interacting with people is always difficult. Like when it comes to work, mm -hmm. it's also difficult mm -hmm. because you tend to avoid jobs where you know you have to interact with people so much or be around people so much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's affected all area, areas of my life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. what I can say. Mm -hmm. Yes. Wow. Mm. So, uh, the fear came into you mm. so much, mm. you know, after the event. Yeah, the social anxiety. Yes. Yeah. And you grew up with it. Yeah, not knowing that I have, I have yes. it. Yes. yes, not knowing. Mm. When did you discover? I discovered, actually, mm. I was in college. We had gone for attachment. Mm -hmm. And during that attachment period, I had so much anxiety, like speaking to my co-workers, my bosses. Interacting with them was always difficult. I used to feel anxious just for no reason. I see these are people like me, but interacting with them was difficult because of the fear I used to feel. One day I came to work and the anxiety attacks were so intense. You know, mm -hmm. it gets to a point where you get anxiety attacks, mm -hmm. those trembling, shaking. And I felt I can't, uh, there must be an we issue. A trigger. Yeah, it just happens. I felt I can't be normal. Mm -hmm. It was on October. And I remember I told myself, ah, I can't be normal. I've been this way. See, I've been feeling this way since primary, high school, college, now even at work. Now how will I even survive? Even at work, I'm always feeling this here. So that's when I decided I need to know, I needed to know what exactly was wrong with me. Mm -hmm. And I remember I called my aunt mm -hmm. and I told my aunt that I wanted to go and see a counselor, but they never asked me. Well, yeah, why I went, I wanted to see a counselor because at that point mm -hmm. it was on October 2018, June, my mom had just died. Now they thought maybe I wanted to see a counselor because of the death of my mom. Yeah, yeah, and I started going to the counseling sessions mm -hmm. every Saturday. You no, know, I used to go for attachment Monday to Friday, mm -hmm. so I started going to the counselor on weekends, mm -hmm. Saturdays, mm -hmm. and as I continued the counseling sessions, I felt the counselor was not helping me. Mm -hmm. the, I, I went to the counselor and explained everything I was going through, mm -hmm. how much my life was full of fear, how mm -hmm. much I had always felt fear for doing everything, fear in men. But as the counseling sessions were continuing with the counselor, I felt that this counselor is not helping me. Were you open enough to speak about the sexual harassment that you had gone through when you were a little girl? Yeah, I, mm -hmm. I talked to the counselor about the fear, everything, mm -hmm. but the counselor well, never told me that I had social anxiety. Mm -hmm. She used to counsel me and tell mm -hmm. me what I can do, me, me, me. Mm -hmm. and after three sessions with the counselor, I decided to con to continue. Yeah, mm -hmm. and do you remember I was not okay? Mm -hmm. I was still going to work, still feeling the excessive fear, extreme fear, mm -hmm. doing everything, mm -hmm. and I continued that way, and on November 6, 2018, it's when I discovered that I had social anxiety. And I did it on my own. I discovered it, it was on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. And on that day, I was at work and my co-workers had gone for a meeting and I was the only one in the office. Mm -hmm. I was there, I was always feeling this way. And mm -hmm. I was on my laptop and something told me to go on YouTube. And I went to YouTube 
and I remember writing, why do I always feel fearful? Why do I always feel fearful doing everything, interacting with people, why do I fear people? And what popped up shocked me, it was a documentary talking about social anxiety disorder mm -hmm. documentary. Mm -hmm. I went through that documentary and it shocked me to realize that everything they were saying in that video it was what, resonating to Yeah, you. since I couldn't believe that since childhood I was I was this way because of I have a mental health condition and I never knew. It really tore me apart to to learn that that no one had even known that I had this condition. You see, if it had been discovered early, it, it would have been treated early. Mm -hmm. So it shocked me so much. And I remember that day I cried a lot. Even walking on the streets, I felt like I was going to be knocked by a car. It, was, I, it really shocked me to discover that I had this condition. You know, when people talk about mental illness, mm. the obvious mm. expectation is that you are out there in tattered clothes, you're not normal, you're talking to yourself and you are not in shape, you don't live in a house, you live on the streets. But that's not what mental illness is. Having listened to you and many other people talking about how mental illness actually comes about. It is sad that you had to go through this for a very long time before you got to discover it. Mm -hmm. And it's even more sad that you had to discover this by yourself. Were you living alone all this time? No, at that time I was, uh, my parents were living, uh, they were in Lemuru mm -hmm. and me I was in Nairobi. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you, after I discovered, I got sick. I became so sick to a point I went home to Lemuru. I know. I was taken to the hospital, given a lot of medicines. I, I never went to work for about one week. It's like I had given up on life mm -hmm. because I didn't know what to do next. And I also didn't know how to explain to my family members that I have social anxiety, but I'm always feeling fear. So, you know, people never seem to understand. Yeah, yeah. So I kept it to myself. I never told them. Did you talk about the rape incident to your to your family? At that point, mm -hmm. 2018, I had not yet discovered that the that memories had not yet mm -hmm. returned. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they had not yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When you did, did you ever do it? Did uh, you talk about it to them? No, to I never. Friends? No, I never told them. You never told them. Mm, actually, they discovered when I shared my story mm -hmm. on another platform. Um, yeah, because it was difficult to share with them. Yes, they couldn't understand exactly what I was going through. Mm -hmm. mm. Did you feel like people judged you on the same basis or it's just you who was keeping information? Because, you know, what I have discovered is that people live life with a lot of sufferings in their hearts. Mm -hmm. People are just walking, but they are, some of them are like walking zombies. A lot of stuff is going on in their minds. They're so stuck to the lot of issues. And people do not have a safe place to vent. They don't have a safe place to let out. Mm -hmm. Did you feel like that was your situation? You had so much uh, baggage and a lot of things inside of you that you needed to trash out, but you were lacking this dustbin. You were lacking that person. You would comfortably let out to invent and say everything that was in your heart freely without feeling that you were judged, without feeling that you were going to be condemned, without feeling that someone is going to harass you again. Mm. Yeah, I felt that so much. Mm -hmm. Actually, after I discovered, I requested my family members to give me money to go and see a psychiatrist. And I never told them why I wanted to see a psychiatrist. And yeah. neither did they push you to tell, to, to know. Yeah, yeah. I went and I saw that psychiatrist, but let me tell you, I never got help that much. The psychiatrist took me through therapy and she only gave me medicines. And those medicines uh, gave me so much side effects to a point I decided to quit using those medicines. And after two sessions with the psychiatrist, I felt that my family members needed to know what I was going through. And I remember we went with my aunt to the psychiatrist. The psychiatrist was supposed to tell my aunt exactly where I was in the psychiatrist, uh, that I had social anxiety and also that I had this fear of men. Had you given them a go ahead? Because, you know, there are professional ethics mm -hmm. that if you came to me as a psychiatrist, mm -hmm. I will not just open up and mm -hmm. tell somebody else without your consent. So 
uh, what surprises me a lot is, you know, when you mention that you're going to see a psychiatrist, everyone who hears you gets concerned immediately. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah, I mean, psychiatrist is for a certain group of people suffering from a certain kind of disorder. So everyone would be concerned why a psychiatrist. And that psychiatrist, people also prefer to go alone unless they're taken. You know? Mm -hmm. So did you permit the psychiatrist to share out what was your struggle then? Yeah, actually I told the psychiatrist that I was going to come with one of my family members, either my dad or my aunt, mm -hmm. for her to explain to them mm -hmm. what I was going through. But when we went to the psychiatrist, and she just did it in general and it it hurt me so much because she never went deeper into it and also me i didn't know how to tell my family members i didn't know how to tell them i was also afraid to mm -hmm. do it on my own mm -hmm. that's why i thought mm -hmm. the psychiatrist would help me but yeah, she yeah, also yeah. didn't help me so i kept quiet mm -hmm. yeah so that also did not help yeah i imagine the psychiatrist never helped and mm -hmm. after three sessions mm -hmm. i quit it mm -hmm. so to it was 2018 December, so 2019 I survived that way. Yeah, even though you're suffering from this and yeah. you have added on to your mother's death. Yeah, you know? but let me say my mother's death I had didn't affect me that much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, these mm -hmm. were the things that were affecting me. Yeah. They were affecting my performance in college, you mm -hmm. see, my work, everything, mm -hmm. my life, yes, mm -hmm. my growth in life. Mm -hmm. mm. It's not uh, easy mm -hmm. to to live with a disorder that you cannot place your finger on. Mm -hmm. Because if you have discovered and you are able to get help, then quickly you will sort it out or talk about it and then somebody else could fix it. But then now in your situation, you can't place a finger on it. Everyone you're talking about it too is not helping either. But you are trying to solve it. It's very difficult. I had this saying that a problem is not a problem if it's got a solution. But if it doesn't have, have a solution, then it remains to be a problem. So that was exactly what you were going through then. Did you ever place this? Did someone finally pinpoint that this is the thing? Actually, no one ever pinpointed it. And even after my aunt was told, uh, she never told my family members about the social anxiety. I think she just uh, just overlooked. overlooked and it ended that way. And I continued that way 2019, 2020. And this year is when I came out on August. I felt that I was tired of suffering alone. That's when I knew that I needed help. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, that's when mm -hmm. I came out on another platform and shared my story. Actually, everyone mm -hmm. learned what I was going through through that platform. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it was difficult for me to explain to people. They didn't understand. Mm -hmm. yeah. Did you feel like they judged you? No. Yeah, somehow they used to judge me. They used to say mm -hmm. that I'm more than you get, mm -hmm. but they never understood mm -hmm. exactly what was wrong with me. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, it's a very difficult place to be mm. when you are alone and you have a problem that mm. you cannot solve by yourself and you need other humans to help you. What did you resolve to do with that problem? After discovering this is a problem, I now need to come out and talk about it and share it out. You have stepped out too much to even go and talk about it and have it there on the public. That is such a big step, such boldness. Congratulations for doing that. Mm, thank you. Because I guess you have helped a lot of people to now discover exactly like there is social anxiety. Mm -hmm. You had to talk to Dr. Google and get all that. Mm -hmm. The people who do not have access, and if they do, they wouldn't still come out and talk about it. But you have done that, and I really give you a thumbs up. I am concerned about how you have been able to resolve this because you have seen a psychiatrist, you have seen a therapist, you have seen a counselor, you have spoken to your close relatives about this and you never got a solution. Yes. How have you been able to resolve this matter? Because for when I hear you, it still eats you up. It still hurts you. Okay. And after I came out this August I sh and shared my story on another platform, mm -hmm. uh, 
a psychologist came out and volunteered to help me. Yeah, and I've now been seeing the psychologist. Yeah, mm-hmm. since September. Yeah, for now I'm on that journey of recovery. Yeah, I'm now going through that recovery journey. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. You're going through therapy. Yeah. Wow, that has just been one month. Yeah. Oh, it's so sad. I, because I, I I don't want you to shy off working your tears. So we'll take a short break here. Then we'll come back and continue listening to Jacinta's story on what social anxiety and androphobia is. Stay with us. Everywhere, GBS. Welcome back. We are talking about social anxiety and androphobia, and that is a few of men. I am here with Jacinta sharing openly her story. I hope you can get help as you listen to her. Before the break, it was a little bit teary, and I'm sorry, so sorry about that. I can only imagine when you have a problem and you're not finding a solution. I want to really appreciate the psychologist that came out to help you, even after listening to your story. Uh, that was really kind of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, when going through such kind of problem, you know, people wonder, you mentioned you're 24, mm-hmm. you're really beautiful, mm-hmm. and if you say you're not able to go out and socialize, I'm thinking, did a man say hello and say I love you and say mm-hmm. I want to be with you? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, that has happened yeah. a lot, mm-hmm. but it's like my mind. You see, you see, when I tell people that I fear men, it sounds irrational. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it sounds irrational, mm-hmm. but it's like after the childhood sexual abuse, my mind was positioned to see men as a threat. I don't know why I always find it, but I tend to see men as a threat, mm-hmm. as if they're going to do something wrong to me. Yeah. Even when I know I'm not supposed to see them, I just find myself feeling that way. I can't control it. Mm-hmm. So it has prevented me. And let me tell you, I've never dated mm-hmm. and I've never had a boyfriend. It's always been difficult mm-hmm. because even interacting with them for long is always uh, difficult mm-hmm. because I always have difficulties uh, holding conversations with them for long. Yeah, and I just can't, it just comes out like that. And let me tell you, I only talk to them when it's necessary. Yeah, it's difficult for me to have conversations for long with them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Unless they talk to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you feel like uh, if I talk to them, they're going to do something bad to me? Do you always feel, why do you feel the unsafe space? Of course, it is because of what happened to you. Mm. But how about when the environment is so safe, you are at work, mm. and someone is not even interested in thinking mm. about you as a woman. Yeah. And so wh- why does that happen always? Yeah, it just happens. Naturally. A man can come and talk to me, and we'll talk like for 10 minutes. But mm-hmm. after 10 minutes, if the conversation is continuing, mm-hmm. I just feel drained. Mm-hmm. I, I start feeling not comfortable. Mm-hmm. It just comes out and I'm unable to control it. Mm-hmm. Holding conversation for long, mm-hmm. for long with them, mm-hmm. it's always a struggle. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So no one has come to approach and say, hey. When they approach, actually to them, mm-hmm. I come out as just shy. You see, they ah. just say you are shy. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. they don't know that actually what's making me to appear shy is there. Fear. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And if they send me messages or call me, I, I usually ignore, I don't answer, yani, I just feel plain. I just, I don't feel connected to them at all. Yeah. Could it, could that be, uh, have you thought that mm-hmm. that could also be a biological issue? Because matters and discussions of love are very interesting. Love is universal, so everyone everywhere mm-hmm. feels and wants the desire to love and to be loved back. So as, as a grown woman at 24, mm-hmm. you know, with everything else sprouting in you, you want to feel, you know, that someone loves, someone cares, someone is checking on you. Mm-hmm. 
and you've got the desire to to have that someone to have that relationship to have this feeling of sharing love you know does that happen to you uh, actually it doesn't happen it doesn't that feeling that you need to be loved yes mm. and wanting to have that boyfriend no it doesn't happen to you yeah i just feel totally mm -hmm. i'm okay with the way i am mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so do you have friends in your circle let me tell you mm -hmm. i don't have i have zero friends when you combine social anxiety and also this mm -hmm. it's difficult to make friends mm -hmm. when you have also social anxiety mm -hmm. so i don't have any friends mm -hmm. of course i know you've got a phone and you go to work yeah. you were done with school yeah you have colleagues at work right? yes what i can mm -hmm. say is i have colleagues at work yes. i have neighbors high school people in school with in college mm -hmm. you get but at a friends close i have mm -hmm. relatives cousins but i can say i have at a friend mm -hmm. yeah in this case friends are who people you can pour out your heart to or friends you know there are different levels and categories of friends mm -hmm. there are those friends of sasa fit and that's it mm -hmm. there are those friends who go and do coffee and after that how are you how is your boyfriend how is your girlfriend and that's it you know there are also buddies you're able to share hey this jama has got me here i can't take his nonsense anymore you know mm -hmm. or these things like this like, i can't do that those friends you really get tight mm -hmm. and those friends who just vibe kidogo and that's it you know so you don't have that level of friendship you have all your friends are just high high sasa fit mm -hmm. yeah yeah do you ever have troubles or issues you want to share something you want to talk about that really eats you up who do you talk that to mm -hmm. just pray about it <laughs> Yeah, but for now, okay. yeah, I just pray about it. Uh -huh. yes. So currently, it is just God that mm -hmm. you can tell literally everything. How is your journey with the psychologist getting along? It's getting along well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's getting along well. And actually, mm -hmm. after going through the first session, the second, I also discovered that I also have post-traumatic stress disorder. Mm -hmm. From the childhood trauma. Yes. Yeah, yeah, the journey is not that at it's not something that will happen at once it's a process yes and i'm trusting the process of recovery mm -hmm. yes it's a good on quite well mm -hmm. yes yes that's a good attitude mm -hmm. if you are getting into you know you're already looking forward to recovery mm -hmm. that's a very good attitude uh and i'm hoping i'm hopeful that truly you'll get to that place where you totally discover yourself. I don't know what exactly you have started with going through your psychological classes, but I guess that one of the things you're probably learning right now is discovering yourself. Actually, many people who have social anxiety mm -hmm. tend to have low self-esteem. Like, like for now, it's when I'm building on my uh, self-esteem. Mm -hmm. Since, let me say, since childhood, I've always had this low self-esteem. But that's something I'm rebuilding on right now. Yes. That, that is cute because, yes. like I said earlier, you look beautiful. You know, a woman wants to look cute and presentable, yeah. not for themselves mostly. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, yes, for yourself, but you're also concerned about who sees you out there when you show up, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So when you wear a nice dress like you are, wear some cute makeup like you have, and do your hair neatly as you have, you know, we're also concerned about who is looking at me and when they do, what do they say? You're so conscious about that. So that has also like make your self-esteem get up, you know. Why would you want to boost your self-esteem? It's for you to be able to interact and socialize and relate to the other people. So I guess that process is going on really, really well. And I'm hopeful that you are going to overcome this. So for now, I know you haven't overcome looking at you and uh, listening out to you, the fact that you are not dating and you're 24, it's not in your mind and you do not have those buddies and friends. Um, I, I, I wish it really goes very well and that, and that, ha that happens soon, mm. soon, soon. Mm. Any plans that you have? Mm. 
the plans that I have uh, thought. Yes, yes, for yourself, you know, you have a career, right? Mm -hmm. You are a woman looking forward to getting married someday, having a family someday, mm -hmm. you know. You don't want to get stuck at where you are. Mm -hmm. You've got to get out of this boat and be able to swim out to the land, yes. Okay, I have a lot of plans, mm -hmm. yeah, but for now, mm -hmm. the main thing that I'm concentrating on right now is getting out of, being able to overcome mm -hmm. these issues that I'm covering. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so that I can also uh, try to reach out to others and also creating awareness to others about this condition, mm -hmm. social anxiety, mm -hmm. that people are not aware of. Yeah, in Kenya, because you'll find most people that have it are addicted to alcohol and drugs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because they don't know how to express what they are going through. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you see, it affects if you can't work, if you can't go to school now, how will you survive? You see, it's difficult. You'll be yeah, and especially for men, you find mm -hmm. they're addicted to drugs, alcohol. Yeah. That that's one of my plans. Mm -hmm. They are reaching out also to others mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and letting them come out of whatever they are stuck in. Mm. Wow! Well, yeah. When I look at um, the society, mm. people go through a lot of issues. A lot of issues. I'm imagining whoever is watching you talking about this today mm -hmm. and what they feel about that. When people hear out your story mm. and other people's story, a lot of change comes to them. One, there's that one who is looking at you right now and saying, you're lucky. Like, lucky you. You're mm. so blessed. Mm. Your issue is, you know, uh, solvable and maybe too small for them mm. because what they're handling and struggling with currently is such a big issue. Remember the guys who, are, uh, who have two gender? Mm -hmm. So they are both male and female. You can imagine how they're supposed to date, how they are supposed to live, how they're supposed to socialize, and even how they're supposed to dress up, mm -hmm. you know, because then everyone knows they have a problem. Mm -hmm. And so I wish that you can get out of this soon. And that's why I am so happy that you have made a big step to now see a psychologist and you're walking into that journey of recovery. When you think about those people who have a bigger problem, what goes on in your mind? When I think about them, I, what comes to my mind is everyone, actually, there's no one who doesn't have problems. Everyone has their own issues that they are going through. But what I can just do is to pray for them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because mm. uh, I listen to what your plan is. Mm. Part of it is to create awareness. Mm. When you create awareness about social anxiety, when you create awareness about androphobia, mm. when you create awareness about those people who are stuck and locked out because of their conditions, you know, and like I've told you, the conditions that are so physical that you cannot hide, you know. Yours is so mental and psychological that a psychologist can fix it, you know? The people who struggle with a hunchback, it's not easy for them. Mm -hmm. The people who have two sexes, like I have told you. And when they think about stepping out to date, it's not an easy thing, mm -hmm. you know? So when you are trying to create awareness and reach out to help those kinds of people, are you considering what they must be going through Remember, no one understood you, mm. and no one fixed it when you had fallen apart. No one fixed it. No one solved your problem. Mm. So you're going to meet people who are in worse situations, you know. What are you going to tell them? Mm. I'll be there to encourage them mm -hmm. and also to support them where I can. Yeah. Um, actually, I've not thought about that, mm -hmm. but I'll start thinking about so it. So I fast track it so much. Yeah, I'm sorry about yeah, that. I'll start thinking about <laughs> it. I'm so sorry about that. Yeah. Uh, but I am really grateful mm -hmm. that uh, you are taking measures 
to fix what your problem is, you know. Have you met someone who is like you? Physically, not yet, but there are those who reached out to me. Mm -hmm. They are like me. I left my number in that other platform where I shared my story and they reached out to me on WhatsApp. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I've met like 15 people who also didn't know that actually, mm -hmm. but they have this has a name. Mm -hmm. That actually it has a name. has a name. It has a name, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it can be solved. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's different for people. Mm -hmm. Others have it mild, mm -hmm. a bit. Mm -hmm. Others moderate. But for mine, it's severe. So it, it ranges. It's the way depression is mild, moderate, and severe. It's the same for social anxiety. Mm -hmm. There are those who it's mild, others moderate, others severe. So mine is severe, but in general, it's all social anxiety. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So I've met people mm -hmm. online, but not yet physically. Yeah, at least now I know mm -hmm. that I, I helped other people to discover what was going on with them. Mm -hmm. mm. Socially, talking about... Actually, that, one yeah. of those persons mm -hmm. was even older, 50 mm -hmm. years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and she did it, yeah, and she child. didn't know what exactly it was. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it hurt me to see that people are not aware, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. people are suffering in silence. Mm -hmm. Talking about social anxiety, you know, uh, social problems may need to be solved socially, mm -hmm. you know, may need to be solved socially. You've got to get out and speak to people about the same. And it's going to involve people and people and people again, you know. I don't know. You said you've never dated. Mm. What concerns me is the fact that you do not have the desire. There are people who have uh, conditions and disorders. They really want that person to come and say, I miss you. I love you. I need you. Mm. I want to be with you. But they're not finding it is such a big issue for them, but that is not your story. That's not your story. Yeah. Haven't you thought that it could be something that needs to be solved, maybe biologically? I know it has taken a toll on you so much emotionally, you know, but then even the feelings are emotional, even the feelings are biological. And you cannot suppress them. You cannot stop them when they come. Mm. So the fact that you don't have them, do you feel that it's still psychological or social? Uh, it's somehow psychological. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So do you look forward? Yeah, I look forward to it in the future. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The future is now. <laughs> the future is now. You were not 10. The mm -hmm. future is now. Mm -hmm. Do you look forward to it? Yes, I look forward to it mm -hmm. in the future. Mm -hmm. yes. If someone made a trial in mm -hmm. a step, mm -hmm. what would the reaction be like? It will still be the same. Why? Why? Uh, because I also have trust issues. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. it will be difficult. Let mm -hmm. me say it will be difficult. Mm -hmm. Yes, at first. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Of course, at first, yes. I've not thought of it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that much. Mm -hmm. Everyone, apparently, Jacinta gets disappointed mm -hmm. somehow. Mm -hmm. Everyone gets disappointed. You try out this, you trust, you know, and you step forward with this. But it just doesn't turn out as you wanted, you know. Mm -hmm. You I walked down the aisle and say I do mm -hmm. so really nicely, but then one month on, you mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. there is an issue and there's a trust issue, and then what do you do? How do you deal? So how do you deal? That question is somehow difficult, difficult. to answer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. How do you navigate around this issue and find that a day is gone? You know, Monday is gone, 
and Tuesday is gonna come. Tuesday is gone, and you're here on, t on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. How do you do on a single, every single day? But by the time you go to bed, you're like, Phew, that day is done. How do you do? Because if you don't do, you know, you're gonna die. You're gonna get crashed on the road. Mm -hmm. You get, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. How do you do? On a daily basis, uh, you just talk about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, share with people. Mm -hmm. Get to ask people what you can do to recover from it. Mm -hmm. Yes, and people do not have a solution. Mm -hmm. The only solution people have, and that you have mentioned rightly, is when you keep talking and talking and talking about the same. Mm -hmm. And that's why I congratulated you in the beginning for now stepping out to talk about it instead of just having it bottled in. When you talk about it, you get relief. When you talk about it, these people you were talking to about, aren't they turning into friends? Aren't they getting to now touch your heart? Aren't they attracting you into relating? They are. They are. But it's online. We've not yet done it physically. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, so mm -hmm. you know, online and physical, it's not. It's not the same. Mm -hmm. Yes. Is there, is there an approach, in a way, that you would need help, from those people? Recently, I watched a movie where, uh, someone was really in distress. Mm -hmm. Really in distress. They had a childhood struggle, and they were raped as well. Mm -hmm. And with the rape came a pregnancy, and of course a baby in the end. And so they hated this baby so badly, they always really hit, this mother hit this baby so badly. She wanted to poison her many times. She hit her to the point of killing her. That did not happen, thankfully. But then now, no one knew what her struggle was. Mm -hmm. So then she met someone who was really out there to help. And you know what happened? She was asked what kind of help she needed. Mm -hmm. She was asked, do you need clothes, money, food? She said, I need nothing of that except a listening ear. Mm -hmm. A listening ear. But when you don't have people around you who listen, how do you even talk? You get mm -hmm. so what exactly do you need because all the super you met tried to offer support but none of that helped you and none of that was maybe what you needed mm -hmm. yeah what do you feel like you need at this time especially to garner support mm -hmm. in terms of which, what? Just generally in your life, what, what do you feel you need to deal with this matter at hand that you are struggling with? Uh, You've got a psychologist? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. What do you need? Do you think you need a boyfriend? Someone who will be there to listen, to talk to? all the time, someone who will be there to understand what exactly is your need around this time. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. now that you have come out, this is the time you are finding solutions. Mm -hmm. When you were just enclosed, nothing was happening, right? Mm -hmm. But when you stepped out and spoke, mm -hmm. then solutions started coming by. Yeah. yeah. So what do you think and what do you feel needs to be fixed? I need to fix a uh, my life also in terms of work mm -hmm. yeah because you see my social anxiety also affected my work like i can't practice what i studied i even don't know where i went to college and did that course because that course involves interacting with people a lot dealing with people so i also need to to work on that yeah, that was the best course, if you ask me. That was the best course because it's the one that is going to fix your problem. If you, if you had asked me what I need, mm -hmm. if that was my situation, 
My answer was going to be, I need a friend. I need a friend. Because that's what you don't have. And that is what is going to fix this. Oh. Yes. Mm. All right, Jacinta, thank you. Thank you so much for sharing your story mm -hmm. and speaking out to us. It has taken you courage and boldness, I guess. Mm. And so we'd like to hear, someone would like to hear what is your take home from you? Okay. Mm -hmm. I'd want to tell parents out there mm -hmm. and generally all people that you see these things children things children go through in their childhood it affects them it affects their growth mm -hmm. yeah it doesn't have to be necessarily sexual abuse also verbal abuse violence in homes like one of the person who came out told me she grew up in an abusive home her father used to beat her a lot and chase them away outside, you see. So, people, uh, this childhood trauma affects children. There are many types of childhood trauma, it's not necessarily sexual or abuse. So, parents should uh, try to help their children when they go through trauma. They should not just ignore it and say that, oh, my kid will, will outgrow it, no, this and this. It affects them. And parents will find someone saying that my kid is always an ogopanga kuongea na watu, is always fierce. You see, kid, parents ignore. You will see those signs to, for children when they, uh, we find they start to cry when they are with people. They don't want, they don't know. They are always withdrawn. In children, it comes out like that. And parents ignore those signs. So my, uh, my request to parents is that they should always uh, be there to watch their kids. And if their kid go, goes through something traumatic, uh, take that child for help. Take that child to therapy. Yeah, childhood trauma is real and it affects a person's growth. Excellent. Yeah, yeah. excellent. excellent. Yes. Thank yes. you. Thank you yes. so much for that. Yeah. Yeah. Short. Yeah. Parents, I hope you got it really right. Do not ignore those simple symptoms that you see in the children. Do not just ignore and assume. And also be watchful. What is it you are doing to your child? She has put it really well. It must not necessarily be sexual, even verbal and beating them. Yeah, physical. All right. Thank you so much, Jacinta, for coming and mm. sharing your story. We truly appreciate that you were able to open up and speak to us all that. Mm. We are think very thankful. Thank you. Thank you also, viewer, for watching this. I hope that you have learned a lot. If you are a parent, you watch closely. Please take care of your children. These things affect them even in the future. Be careful. Take care. My name is Betty. I've been your host. See you next time.